Hi there, and welcome to All About the Bass on Anderton's TV. I'm Nathan. And I'm the captain. And, uh, okay, we've got a cool funky pedal today. It's a bit more than just a funky pedal, isn't it? It's sort of, um, mm. potentially, it is going to do away with your enormous uh, bass guitar rig. At least that's what they say. Um, and we're here to find out. We are. So, two notes. Uh, I'm reasonably familiar with two notes. My good friend Rabir has been an advocate of their cabinet emulation products for, I don't know, six months to a year or so now. Uses them in his studio all the time. Um, and that's kind of their, where they come from basically in, in sort of digital cabinet emulation. So you take a guitar amplifier, you take a line out or a speaker output from that guitar amplifier, run it into the emulation box, and then just get these killer, killer authentic sounds direct into your interface, your you know, your workstation uh, that you can record. And it's really, really tough, nigh on impossible now to go, oh yes, I can tell that's not a real cabinet mic'd up. You know, very, very good. Um, and I can't remember if it was end of last year or beginning of this year, but Two Notes released four pedals, um, three of them that are guitar uh, related and one of them is bass related. This one is the bass one, Le Bass. They're a French company, don't you know? You probably guessed that. Not Le Bass. Le Bass. Um, so, uh, and what they say in the blurb is, this is the uh, a tube preamp section of your bass amplifier that has a very, very simple um, cabinet simulation on and off button that if you want to, you, you can switch on and use without any of the other Two Notes products. Or what they're really recommending is that you use this in conjunction with their cab pedal. Uh, which effectively is, you know, a, a similar size to this, maybe a smidgen bigger than this. Is that the torpedo? Yeah. Okay. Well, a torpedo is everything. So the, the torpedo range is uh, has about four products in it. Oh. So it's the it's the cab pedal, which is the one with which is relatively small, um, about the same size as this, and has no load box in it. Mm. So it's just the cabinet emulation. So what they're really kind of saying is, look, have have a pedal board with all the other pedals on it that you might like. So if you have other distortion pedals, echo pedals, whatever you like, compressor mm. pedals, run them with this, just like you would with your bass amp. This has an effects loop built into it. So again, you can have pedals in front of it, pedals through the effects loop, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then run this into the cab speaker emulator, and then that into your PA system. And it then does away completely with your bass amp. Okay, well you can do that these days, uh because a lot of people use in-ear monitors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that sounds great. Uh, or if you've got just decent wedges, you know, yeah. big wedges, that's going to work too, isn't it, on stage? Yeah. yeah. So, yes, Nathan's completely right there. You, you know, if you've got a little, you know, if your fold back consists of a 25-year-old h and H 50-watt powered wedge, you're probably not going to get rid of your <laughs> bass amplifier. But if you've got a modern, you know, 1,000-watt like wedge or you're using in-ear, it's a possibility. Hmm. So what we've got here is we're running this pedal, uh, we're running this pedal in isolation. So there's, there's no other pedals, we're not using the, the cab emulation, the separate cab emulation or anything like that. We're running this pedal into a regular bass amp. Um, I'll tell you for why in a minute. And we're also running it into a PA cabinet, which is then carrying on through straight into the interface. So you're gonna be able to hear um, what the pedal can do as a straight preamp pedal into a bass amp. So if you've got a bass amplifier, you'd just like to sort of jazz up the tone and give yourself some switching options. That's what you'll hear when it's running through this. Uh, and when we signal, uh, you'll also hear what it sounds like just run straight into the DI, which um, gives you an idea of how perhaps you might be able to record with this or into a PA. Now recording does kind of come a bit more into its own because one of the things that you get for free as part of a digital download when you buy one of the um, pedals, the two notes pedals, are 16 of their um, cabinet emulations that you can then use with your, you know, copy of Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools, whatever you're using. Mm. We're not using any of that. Um, Live-wise, if you're just using this without the cabinet emulation pedal, then it's really it's just just a switch on the side that that, that just puts one preset cab emulation on this on the sort of tone so look we're going to kind of 
play around with that. These are relatively affordable in my opinion for a, a sort of piece of pro kit. They sell for about 220 pounds a pop. Uh, all of the, the pedals sell for this price regardless of whether you buy the bass one or the guitars. They're tube uh, driven. Uh, the, the, the blurb says that the voltage running through the tubes is 200, uh, 200 volts, 200 millivolts or 200 volts? 200 volts, I think it's 200. It's essentially what they're saying is it, 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 it's, um, they're running the same voltage through the preamp tube that you would typically get in a guitar amplifier. So it's, it's utilizing the tube in the same way that an amp would utilize a preamp tube. So look, let's just get into it. Let's tell you what, let's get you some sounds. So here's a sound with nothing. Uh, and I guess uh, I haven't plugged in the speaker emulation or anything. So here's what it would sound like. Here's what our dry bass amp sounds like. And uh, obviously we aren't going to hear this bit, but just for your sake, uh, yes, we will. We'll hear it through our little PA cabinet in here. Uh, this is what it will sound like uh, straight into the uh, hour. Uh, interface, but with nothing switched on, so no cabinet emulation, no nothing. Could you just okay. repeat that riff, please? <laughs> yeah, good luck. So that's kind of what a PA, uh, what a bass would sound like straight into your interface. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I guess is let's switch the emulation on, and we'll I think we'll leave this on for the rest of the demo because it's kind of like. You probably we probably wouldn't record without some form of speaker emulation, or would you? You might do. Well, I don't know. It's up but to you, isn't well, it? it does really. It's all personal taste, isn't it? It depends whether you think it sounds better or not. Can we do an AB with on and off? Of course we can. Yeah. Um, I suspect what will happen is once we introduce some preamp distortion from here, yeah, without the cabinet emulation, it's probably going to have that high sort of transient kind of frequency that's right. just like a bit nasty. Like do you? <laughs> personally, um, yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, hey. So yes, Nathan and I have just had a little conflab and we've decided that the easiest way to do this, we're going to do the full demo of the pedal straight into the amp and then we're going to do the demo again, effectively into the um, workstation. So if you're not interested in what this sounds like into an amp, you can press your fast forward button now <laughs> until the, the next bit happens. So um, essentially the pedal's got two preamps. It's got an A preamp uh, and a B preamp. The, the A is a clean kind of preamp. The B has got a little bit of dirt on it. Uh, if I press both buttons together, we go into what's called a fusion mode. Um, has two versions of fusion, cold and hot fusion. Cold fusion is where both A and B work in parallel and you have a blend control. So um, you can bend between, blend between whether you want more of the clean or more of the dirty. Uh, hot fusion works in series and preamp A sort of cascades into preamp B. So it acts as like a, a boost, an extra boost to drive preamp B harder. That sounds very exciting. Um, tons and tons of IO on here. So we've basically, we've got the, the input for the bass guitar here. Uh, we've got a DI output that we that you would run into your interface or into a workstation or whatever uh, with speaker simulation uh, switchable on and off. Uh, a straightforward line output that you might put into a bass amp, uh, which uh, where the speaker simulation doesn't affect. Uh, a through, which is a complete through of the bass, so it doesn't go through the pedal or the speaker simulation or anything that can just go oh, off okay, to somewhere yeah. else. Uh, I guess if you want to do, um, you know, if you want to reamp your, you know, if you yeah, want for to recording of, yeah, maybe, and you a, just want the the dry, you just want a dry signal for reamping, you come out of there. It's got an effects loop. It's got MIDI in and MIDI out. So again, you can either trigger the switch changes via MIDI from another device or you can get this device to trigger MIDI changes on another wow. device. It's got a headphone socket too. Has it? it? Yeah. I didn't even see that. It's got a headphone yeah. socket. Ground lift. Um, it's fully loaded, this. So we're going to start doing the demo. And what we're going to hear is we're going to have a little bit of a play around with what, what does this sound like as just a standalone pedal into our Mark Bass amplifier. We're using a Mark Bass Big Bang. And then we're going to do the second half of the demo where we use the DI output straight into the interface uh, with the speaker simulation and you can kind of see how authentic that sounds. The other cool thing that you get um, when you buy one of these pedals uh, is you get uh, an unlock key to download uh, 16 of the two note uh, cabinet emulations uh, that you can then run in your you know, Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools, whatever you're using. Uh, we're not using those today. We are simply just using the pedal as is. So the only speaker emulation that we're using is the 
switch on the side here, uh, which you'll only hear through the interface, as discussed. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on. So let's just have a play around. Here's your, here's your dry signal. And here's channel A. Can I have a fiddle about with that? Yep. It's just like having one of those sort of pre-shape buttons on your on your bass amp, isn't it? It just adds a sort of a yeah, more variable though, I guess, because you know you can tweak about with it to your heart's content. Can't yeah, you? but it's just a, a clean sounding kind of modern sounding mm -hmm. bass amp, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Um, okay, channel B, which is where we get a bit dirty potentially. Here we go. Channel B. Channel B's got lots of guts. It's good, to it, man. It? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's like a, a proper sort of bass overdrive yep. thing going on there. Yeah, sounds fat. So we're going to fusion mode now, and basically we've got the two options: the hot and cold. We'll start in cold. This fusion button here, um, we initially thought it was a blend control, but what it, what it, and it sort of is, but it's not panning from preamp A to preamp B. Right. It's defining how much of preamp A you hear in the overall mix. Okay. So if we start with the, the cold fusion, which is where sort of preamp A and B are running simultaneously, but in parallel rather yeah. than stacked. Um, so with that off, it's basically just like B. It's pretty much just and B, And then it's it? going to fade in A. That's that right? right, yeah. And we've talked about that before, haven't we, which is where sometimes if you are using a driven bass sound, you do sometimes quite want an element of the, the clean tone coming through as well mm -hmm. to just fill it out and give you the bass end that you sometimes lose with a lot of drive. So sure, anyway, yeah. here we go. Keep playing. Into hot fusion mode now. Notice the uh, display changes every Ooh. time you, you you change a mode, uh, and this is where essentially now so preamp B is driving pre so preamp. <laughs> so this is where preamp A is driving preamp B like oh. a boost pedal. Righty ho, do it. Drive away. quick overview of the pedal into the amplifier. I think we'll, we'll jump straight in. We're going to essentially do pretty much the same thing again now where you're just hearing the, the DI output because I'm guessing for a lot of people they'll be thinking, do you know what, I just want to have a little bit more control over my bass guitar for recording. Mm -hmm. um, or they might, again, they may even be thinking, I don't want to take a bass guitar amp rig to a, mm. a gig. I just literally want to plug this into the PA. So yeah. hopefully this will give you an idea of what this sounds like. Um, so we've got a speaker in here that we're going to turn on. So I can turn this off. This we can turn on. So we're now listening to it just like you are through a PA cabinet. Okay, let's do this. Uh, so, I'd, so first and foremost, even without switching A or B on here, the speaker simulation works, uh, assuming I turn it on. So I'm going to leave that on for the whole thing. Well, should we try a bit off and on so we right, can okay. dig that? So here we go. Dig no, it, no, dig at it, all. you crazy cats. <laughs> So it's a little bit of extra warmth and a little bit less top end. I think that's um, fair to say. Here we go, here's preamp A. Keep 
keep playing. I'll just switch it. Never ceases to amaze me actually how okay a bass guitar sounds just plugged into a PA with nothing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it sounds better with this for sure, but you know, you could certainly get away with it, can't you? Just plug into a PA. Well, that's why, you know, in so, in so many recording situations and live situations, you know, mm. they, that's the engine, it just wants it DI'd. Like yeah. before the amp, before anything, they just yeah. want it, the bass DI'd, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you anyway, all the time. So let's do B, which is, I'm guessing, kind of where the speaker emulation will come into its own a bit more because, I, I, in my opinion, if you don't, if you just let all the high frequency through when you've got distortion coming from a pedal, that's when it gets unpleasant sounding. But here we go, here's B. take the speaker emulation out whilst this is on so you play non-stop I'll yeah. switch this on and then I'll take the speaker emulation out and switch it back on again but keep that riff going that was kind of cool let's do that yeah <laughs> I see what you mean about yeah. those high frequencies. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> so keep you going. Were, you were right. Well, I'm sold on the speaker emulator. Yeah, it, distortion and PA cabinets do not mix. No. You know, it, without speaker emulation. So let's go into the uh, cool, the fusion mode. Yeah. So cold fusion again to start with, just for some more. <laughs> basic tone of this pedal I think it's very you know it's it's they've captured a nice I don't know what they've copied it on or based it on if it's their own basic preamp design but mm. it's I like it yeah. uh, so lastly into hot mode hot mode with a bit more distortion again uh, here we go Voila! Et voilà, monsieur, he says, <laughs> yeah, rounding I mean, the French thing off nicely. We, they taught us German in school, so... Uh, Did they? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I can't help that's you on the French. good! Yes, you're good! <laughs> Guess where I learned that line from. <laughs> <laughs> the only German line I know. Was it a porn film? I can't possibly say. Mm. <clears throat> okay, um, that's it. So it's called the, the, the Two Notes La Base. Um, I suspect what we'll probably get with Rabir at some point is, is he'll do a demo of the guitar related versions of these, ah. but I think it's kind of cool. And I can certainly see, you, you know, as a bass player, I think it's a handy piece of kit for the, for the money. It's not loads of money, a couple hundred quid. And you get in, you know, you've got a nice sort of preamp on the A side, you've got some nice overdrive on the B side, you've got a speaker simulator. Uh, built in, which now I've heard it through a PA cabinet, is vital Yeah. if you're going to DI it. Um, you've got the DI out options, you've got, it's, it's, it's like even a headphone socket. So, you know, if you just want to have it in the dressing room practice. or at home to practice, it's mm. spot on. Yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to, I mean, again, it makes sense that, you know, if you, and you know, you're a touring bass player, uh, and I suspect, you know, well used to using in ear monitors and all that kind of Absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, you, it begs the question why are you taking a bass amp? 
to your gigs? Well, this is kind of a, a new thing that, that's come up mm. these days. Because if you're doing a, a gig, um, you know, that's got a, a big PA in it, very often, you know, your bass um, is only really there for monitoring on stage. Mm. Um, so, yeah, technically, if you've got well, really they're good they're in-ear monitoring. They're for monitoring on stage, and if you've got a sound that you like from your bass amplifier. Of course. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an important part. Yeah, yeah. But if you get a sound that you like from this... Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, there is an argument, I think, on certainly on guitar stuff, I think the cabinet emulation is so integral to the sound of your guitar. I can understand why if you had one of the guitar-related ones of these pedals that you'd want the cabinet pedal as well. But I think on bass stuff where, you know, the cabinet emulation is a more subtle effect, uh, although I can feel lots of comments to the contrary yeah, coming. Maybe on. this is like you know typical guitarist talking. Don't know anything about bass guitar, and I and I'll take that on the chin. Uh, but if your sound is a, if you know, if you're not going to use the distortion sound on this, or, yeah. I don't know. Look, I mean, I'm, all I'm trying to say is I, I think potentially there'll be more bass players buying this pedal and choosing not to bother with the cabinet emulation pedal than there would be guitar players. Oh well, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, so. Well, you know, because with the guitar, I suppose there are so many uh, different uh, options. Uh, yeah. You know, the 112, 212, full 12, open back, I mean, close yeah. back. Blah, and, blah, and, blah, it, blah. and it changes the sound so dramatically when you go from one cab to another on an electric guitar, whereas, whereas on a, you know, bass, well, whatever. Do you know what? This is the beauty of these videos. Nobody's right or wrong. It, we just have an opinion. And you, you well, obviously, yeah, Nathan's right. Uh, and then, you, you, you know, you discuss away in, in the comments section below. But there we are, look. Um... That was good, you know. I mean, it's it's it's. I was kind of sort of. I think it's deceptive this because it's you know it's not that expensive. I was kind of thinking it wouldn't do that many things, but it does loads. Well, um, it does loads. Right? Yeah. It's got lots of features on it. Yeah, yeah. That, that are all useful. Yeah, or well, mostly useful. Have we missed anything? Is there anything on the bottom? No, there's nothing on the bottom. Uh, there's nothing on the top here, is there? No, that's it. It just is what it is. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I've been the captain. And I've been Nathan. Au revoir. Okay, so let's... Here we go, preamp A. Too much, sorry about that. Uh, let's try that again, so...